Right. Welcome to uh, the inner chip example. So what we're going to do now is take some time and kind of write a program utilizing the iterative structure in Python. Okay. To do this, we're going to go back to an oldie but a goodie. Some of you may have already seen this before, uh, but let's talk about how we would do this in Python. But so uh, in this case, Susan is hired for a job and her employer agrees to pay her every day. Her employer also agrees that Susan's salary is one penny the first day, two pennies the second day, four pennies the third day, and continue to double each day. What we want to do is create an application that allows the user to enter the number of days that Susan will work and calculate the total amount of pay she will receive over the period of time. But what we want to do is loop in this case, because what basically what's going to happen is, is that if we notice how the, what the, how the problem reads, we're going to enter the number of days of work. And what we want to do is accumulate her pay based upon those numbers of days. So we're going to be repeating the same code over and over and over again. In some cases, as a new programmer, you may need to practice this and see this and maybe try to figure this out without using a loop, but then you should start recognizing the repetition of the same code. So if you're not seeing how the loop is applied here, do it without a loop. And I think that might help you see where a loop comes into play. Excuse me. So with that said, how would we do this? Well, if we look at our pseudocode here, we would go get the day's work. That's our input. That's the only input we have. Our output for this case is total pay. The wage I'm going to set up and kind of get started, where so I'm going to, uh, we want to say, initialize our wage to a penny. That's our first day of work. And I'm going to have a counter, all right? Now, how do I know I need a counter? Well, in some cases, as I'm writing this uh, particular algorithm, uh, maybe I didn't have that counter there first. And I started trying to figure out how am I going to write my loop in doing this. But so. This is not something that, you know, I just wrote off the top of my head. Now, I've been doing this for a long time, so I'm pretty good at it. Yet, for beginners, don't worry about it. That's what design's for. Think it through. And as you're thinking it through, you may have to go back and add things as you go through it. Take it one step at a time. Allow yourself time to think through the solution, all right? So, in this case, what I'm going to do is I want to loop through this thing as many days as they come to work. Well, I have to compare that to something, so I'm going to create a counter, okay? So I'm going to loop through it and compare it to the counter. So they give me 10 days of work. I want to loop through it and do while uh, counter, I should say, uh, does it do while? Well, do while counter, and I'm going to say it the other way. It should be less than or equal to days work, okay? Add that a little bit backwards, sorry about that, okay? And so I'm gonna do while the counter is less than the day's work. So they give me 10 days, I'm gonna start my counter at one, and I'm gonna keep going through until day's work equals, uh, uh, until, until the counter equals or is greater than day's work. Make sense? Why I'm doing it that way? And then what I'm gonna do, the first day comes in, so I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna process the wages for the first day, all right? So in this case here, my total pay is going to equal my wage. So my first day is a penny. All right, I already got total pay. Good for me. All right, now what I'm going to do, so let's, let's go back and look at this from a test case scenario. Let's just say I work one day. My total wage should be a penny. So in this case, do while counter one is less than or equal to day's work, okay, which is one. Okay, that's what I'm going to put in there, one to one, correct? My total pay is going to equal the wage, which is a penny. That's true. I'm going to, my wage is, I'm going to increase my wage uh, by two. I'm going to double it. So wage equals wage times two. That's what that says right there. Uh, the star equals, okay. We talked about that a little bit last week. And then I'm going to increment my counter. I go back through and I say, uh, my counter is now a two, right? But it's now greater than this. So it's going to fall out and go right here. It's going to fall out. It's not going to go back through because this condition basically says my counter is now greater than days worked. I fall out and my total day, my total pay will be a penny. Yay me. There you go. I looped through it one time, but it worked correctly. Let's look at this in another way. Let's say my days worked are two. So based upon the requirements, she's going to get a penny the first day and then two pennies the second day. And so her total pay should be three cents for the two days of work. Not a very good job, don't you agree? So let's see how that would work. So my, I got a penny first day, so I got two up here. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna calculate my first day, which is gonna be a, uh, a penny. I'm gonna double it. I'm gonna, my wage now doubles to two cents. 
I increment my counter. So two is equal to two, so everything's good. I'm gonna add that two cents then to my total pay, which was one cents before, and my total pay will now be three cents. I double it again, add my counter, which is now three, but it's now greater than this. I fall out and my total pay will now be three cents. Do you see that? If not, take some time, pause this video, go back, listen to it again. Make sure you understand the flow of how this looping works. Once again, it's complicated at first for some programmers, and that's fine if it is for you, but take your time and embrace it and try to learn it, okay? Because once you see it, once you get it, it's very, very powerful. But I know this is the, uh, this is the structure that probably causes more confusion for students because they don't take the time to see it, okay? And then once again, if you have to, you go solve the problem without the advent of loops at all, okay? Let's just pretend the loops don't exist. How would you solve this problem if they didn't exist? It gets quite difficult, but you'll see yourself doing a lot of repetitive code and a lot of conditional statements over and over again, all right? Anyway, so that's our particular pseudocode for this case. How do we apply this to Python? Well, let's go into our program. And I already did it, so I'm not going to bore everybody with doing it. So I did my little assignment name, my name up here. Uh, hopefully everybody's doing that on their programs. I did a couple things. So in this case here, what I did was I said, I, my input, this is going to be an integer, enter the numbers of days worked, okay? I automatic, I went ahead and set a counter to one. I created my, my pay and my wage, all right? I do want to continue on, you know, doing the things necessary that you declare your variables at the top. Yes, you can declare variables as you go on. There's no doubt about it. But that becomes a maintenance nightmare. I, don't, I think it's a good idea to declare your variables at the beginning of your program so we know what's going on. And it's very easy to maintain, not only for you as a developer, but for the next person who might pick up this code and have to maintain it. All right? So with that said, I went ahead and made these afloat. My pay is zero and my wage is zero. I went ahead and casted them as floats. So I wanted them, I want the, I basically took control and told the computer, I want these to be a decimal, okay? And so I want the data types within uh, these particular uh, variables to be decimals. That's what has the casting, if you recall that from last week. Based upon my, um, my, uh, I'm sorry, based upon my, uh, my pseudocode, I said, I'm, while int counter is less than or equal to number of days. It's pretty much the same thing, right? Let's go back to this. While the counter is less than or equal to, now, so it's the same concept, okay? I'm going to plus equals my wage. I'm going to double, I'm sorry, my total pay is gonna be my way, I'm gonna accumulate it with my wage. I'm starting at zero, so I'm gonna add the penny to it. First time through, I double it and I increment the counter. Very similar to what my pseudocode actually looks like. So if we do our pseudocode and solve the problem prior to get diving into the program, it makes this a little bit easier. Once again, thinking through the program and the logic prior to diving in and coding it. Once I'm out on my loop, notice the indention here, okay? So everything here. What I mean by this is this. If I sit back and like in this case here, the fact that this is not indented means it's not part of the loop. But if I did this, it now becomes part of the loop. All right? And maybe we can actually play with this. We can actually see what the differences will look like on the output. Okay? So let's go ahead and test this uh, the first time through. And so I put day's work. If I say one day, it should be a penny. And it is. Total pay is a penny. Yay me. Right? The other thing I said is two days should be three cents, and our total pay is three cents. So the big question I always ask in all my classes, and you may have been in a class of mine where I actually asked this question, is this a job that you actually want? Would you take this job? Don't give the answer away if you already know this answer, but in this case here, if you don't, what's your answer? Love to hear you. you can scream it out. I'll, I'm listening somewhere. Trust me. All right? So let's just say you work a week, five days. Well, after a week, you made a whopping 31 cents. Still not a very good job for a week as work, I, I don't think. I mean, that's 40 hours, so you're making less than a penny an hour the first week of work. Not that great, right? 
Uh, and so, okay, so then we come in here and we'll go again and we'll say, okay, that's all good. How about two weeks? How much would I make? So in two weeks, you don't just double 31 cents. Remember, your, paid your, your wage doubles every day. And so after two weeks, you make $10.23. Is it a good job now? So you worked 80 hours for $10.23. I, 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 you know, getting, returning Coke bottles, <laughs> that's, I'm aging myself, you get more money. Uh, anyway, all right, let's go back. Oops, there we go. And let's try another one. In this case here, how about 20 days? So this is basically a month of work, right? Four weeks and five days. How do you think we came up there? Wow. So if you actually work 20 consecutive days, your total pay, because it's constantly doubling, would be $10,485.75. That's not bad for a month. I mean, if we took that out, uh, if you paid 10 grand a month, I mean, that's $120,000 a year. Not bad. All right? Huh. Maybe this job's not bad if I can last a whole month. Okay? Well, how about if I lasted 30 days? Okay, so that's about, that's, what's that, six weeks? six weeks of work, if you did that based upon the formula, you would make $10,737,418. So the answer to the question is, yes, you want this job, but you want to make sure that you at least work 30 days, six weeks. If you do that, you might not have to work ever again, all right? But if you really want to uh, blow it away and, you know, maybe go ahead and work two months, so two months would be what? Uh, so uh, you said 20 days, that'd probably be about 40 days. If you get two months in, I think you're good. I think you're good. You're, you're, you're a billionaire. Congratulations for two months of work. Uh, that's what I think we all strive for, correct? All right. Okay. So a couple things here. Once again, notice the indentation. Now let's go ahead and put this in the loop here like this, okay? And let's see what happens. Let's play around with this a little bit. And we'll go ahead and put our five days in here. And uh, we, let's see, we got an error. Why would we get an error in this case? Uh, must be string, not float. Uh, I guess because I formatted it and I made my double pay, I see why. I actually changed, if you notice what I did here, my pay I actually formatted uh, in this case here. And, uh, and, so, and, and the reason I formatted it is to put the commas in there. I was going to talk about that here in a second. But let's go ahead and take this out. I want to just show you something. And I, let's just go ahead. Yeah, let's go ahead and put print in here. There you go. And we'll do it that way. Stop this. And we'll go through and put five days in here. And you see that it actually printed for each day. One penny, three cents, seven cents, 15 cents, 31 cents. That's great if you wanted to do that. My point to all of this is this. Because we indented this, with it became part of the loop. If we don't indent it, it's not part of the loop. Does that make sense? That's how it works in Python. Okay? All right. Let's get this back out here. And I do want to talk about for one second this format. Uh, format is a function, okay? And what format's going to do is it's sort of, you know, powerful, but there's actually more powerful functions to it. Uh, I don't have what I wanted here. Um, and, uh, but you can look this up on W3 Schools. It's called format. And you can format your numbers in a lot of ways. What this one's doing is it's going to take this number and apply commas and the decimal point for my currency. It does not, though, and there is nothing for uh, formatting currency. There is, but it comes a little bit later on, and we have to learn about a few new things before we can actually utilize a function that is new that we can actually use to format currency, meaning putting the dollar sign in front of it. So right now, the best we can do is, is use this format function in its native form and put a comma there. At least it separates uh, the thousands by a comma. Does that make sense? And it's called format, all right? And once again, you'll find that in the resources that I supplied uh, in, uh, in, on your, on your, on the, for this week, okay? All right. Now, we did this with the while loop, okay? And it all worked great. Can we do this with the for loop? Well, the answer is, ta -da -da, I kind of tricked you, right? Uh, what we can do is very easily come up here and do it as this. And I'll show you how we could do this with the range. 
I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. This is what's nice about comments too. Sometimes you can play with code and comment out things as you're testing it or trying other things new. So, I, I'm, so in this case, I'm commenting out the while loop. I'm going to replace it with the for loop, okay? Now let's look at what this is doing. I'm starting my counter at one. Remember, if I don't do that, it starts at zero in the for loop. But in this case, I'm going to start at one. It's going to be in the range of the INT number of days, which was my input. So whatever they give me, I'm going to loop through this as many times as they give me. And so that's not a bad thing. That's actually a very good thing. So this a for loop works really well with this program. I'm going to double my, I'm going to add my wage to my pay. I'm going to double it. And what you notice is this automatically increments. So thus I don't need to add one to the counter. See the difference? Okay. If I do all this, excuse me, if I do all this and run this thing for five days, there you go. Total pay is 31 cents. And we go from there. Uh, if we get back up to the big numbers, let's get to the big numbers. It does the exact same thing. All right, you're a billionaire, congratulations. All right, so that's the for loop. So I'm doing that based upon the range in this case, okay, as we go through it. And it should all work the exact same way. Let's put two days in there, make sure three cents. Yep, everything is good, all right? So I've used the form loop with the range because I know how many days I want it so I can actually know how many times I want to loop through based upon the days the user gave me. What do you think? All right? I'll supply this code to you. You can look at it, play around with it, walk through it, make sure you understand it, and make sure you can kind of get your head around these loops, okay? It does take practice, takes a little bit of patience, but play around with this. Load this up and run this thing. Walk through it and make sure you completely understand it. If you like, do what we did before. Put that print statement in there and watch it increment the pay as it goes. Uh, and it might make a little bit more sense to you because here's what we did before. I came back up here, I can put that in there, and then we can sit back and watch it for five days. Once again, my first day is 1, 3, 7, 15, 31, and my total pay, this is my last one I printed out because I didn't erase that, is 31, so we should have a duplicate in there, which is true, okay? Meaning I, I'll show you here, let's make sure I don't confuse you. I did print on the last day, and I printed again down here. That's why I showed up twice. Make sense? Anyway, try it out. Have some fun with it, uh, get to play with loops, and uh, good luck with you on your assignment.